We're out at the beach. If you're familiar with this area, you might recognize it once we get out there, but this is a great fishing area, great fishing beach. I caught a lot of big fish here, but this beach has one major problem. And today I brought a secret weapon to fix that problem. This is the secret weapon. And before anyone asks, no, I did not get a truck. Although I would like to get one someday. Still rocking the Corolla. My buddy brought me to borrow this one for carrying this guy around. All right, let's fire up and get going. My wife would be happy to know that I brought also helmet provided by Hemiway. And let's get going down this hill. So this is the Hemiway Zebra long range e-bike. I have the, uh, I think it's called pale green is the color that I have. They have a bunch of different colors. And basically, normally I'd be walking down this whole stretch of little path here but today this bike is going to be doing all the hard work for me and right now it's all downhill so obviously it's a little bit easier any bike could do that but on the way back the electric feature of this bike is going to come in handy on the way down using the brake system this zebra e-bike from Hemiway features hydraulic brake system for enhanced stability and safety. But yeah, looking forward to riding this bike today. A lot of cool features on it. And it's gonna make my job here a whole lot easier than it normally would be. Handles these speed bumps, no problem. Nice suspension system in the front. All right, we made it down. That didn't take long at all. Let's see how long that took us. It was such a quick trip down. Normally that takes probably 15, 20 minutes. It took us only three minutes here. So I didn't even have enough time to tell you about all the features on this bike. So let's cut to that now. Talk a little bit about this bike. This is the Hemiway Zebra, a premium all-terrain electric fat tire bike. With its 960 watt hour battery capacity, the e-bike can cover up to 60 to 80 miles on a full charge. Equipped with 26 by 4 inch fat tires, the e-bike is designed to handle a variety of terrains, including sand and snow. This bike is heavy duty and can support a weight of up to 400 pounds, offering convenience for riders of any size. And finally, the e-bike features a powerful 750 watt geared hub motor, providing a smooth and powerful ride. While well, hitting a little bit of a snag here, like I mentioned uh, earlier, this bike features these fat tires which are perfect for riding it down the beach. So that's what I was planning to do. I was planning to ride it down that way, kind of hit some spots that normally I probably wouldn't go to just because they're so far down the down the beach. But as you'll see in a little bit, the tide is so high that there's no beach. The white waves are coming right up to the cliffs here. So I'm just going to actually leave the bike here and fish right out front right here. I can't even walk down the beach if I wanted to. So you can see here the waves are just crashing right up on the beach here. So not really very far for me to go, fortunately. But let's cast a line in right here. Looks like there's a little bit of junk in the water, so we'll see how this goes. But uh, if you watch the channel for a long time, I've caught some big fish off the rocks before, so I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't at least try right here. Let's see what happens. A little rough, but um, yeah. Okay, that one got me. 
Got a little soak from that last wave, but we gave it a try. It actually doesn't look too bad. There definitely could be fish in there, but I just don't like the fact that I'm confined to this one spot. I like to cover a lot of ground when I'm fishing the beach. So on that note, we're gonna trek up this hill, use this e-bike for what it's worth, and head on to spot number two. Spot number two should have more beach, so we should be able to use the bike to kind of go down and cover some more water. So anyways, plan A, kind of a fail, but at least we get to use the bike. I've walked this thing so many times, every time it's the dreaded hike back to the car, but this time, I'm actually excited to do it. This is where the fun begins. Oh yeah. This is wonderful. Why have I not done this sooner? Look at that. No pedaling. Just pure electric power. Ooh. Be careful over the bumps. In my youth, I used to be a reckless bike rider jumping off ramps and stuff like that. I'm surprised I never broke an arm. But now in my old age, gotta be a little more careful. The body doesn't bounce back the way it used to. We're cruising right now. We're going eight and a half miles an hour, nine miles an hour. That's like at least four or five times faster than we normally would be going up this hill. And I should just come here just to go up and down this hill. So easy. So easy. Leave that here. Now let's pass right here. There's got to be some fish in here somewhere. Right in here is a good little area. A nice little calm water right in here. It's kind of rough, you know, out deep, but right in close here, definitely could be some surfage hanging out in there. A little bit rough, but definitely fishable. All right, let's see if we can find one. Try this little spot for a while. We have kind of a weird thing going on right now. There's like a, I think it's called an onshore breeze, or whatever it means when the wind's blowing from land out to sea, which can be bad if you're out there, but on the beach, it's actually a good thing, especially with this plug. Sometimes these can be tough to cast into the wind, especially. But when the wind's at my back, I just need to get it up in that jet stream, and this thing is bombing out there. I'm getting premium distance on this cast, but. But in terms of fish, I haven't really found much. I don't really know. There's decent water in here, not perfect, but uh, you know, definitely could be fish in there. I think maybe when the tide is lower, this spot might fish a little better. I think a lot of the holes in the deeper water where those fish might hang out might be a little bit too far out for this plug at least. So maybe cast your two more and then we'll make a move down the beach, hit the next hole down. Tired and 
ocean for like last, I don't know, eight or so hours. Covered a lot of area because of this bike. I was able to cover way more area than I typically would. I probably covered, I don't know, I'd say probably around 10, you know, five miles one way and then five miles back. Cast it all along the way. A lot of spots, you know, there's a lot of spots that didn't look that great, but there was also quite a few areas that I thought had potential, but I don't even think. All right, day two. I was thinking last night after my miserable day out on the surf yesterday, I was like, man, I used to be able to catch surf perch all the time. I used to just go out here and feel like I could just catch them any given day. But it's been a while since I've been in the surf game. And in this video today, I'm gonna make a commitment to try my hardest to catch them, to see if I still got it. So the goal for today is to catch three 12 inch surf perch. Not a lot, but you know, it's been a while since I've caught a surf perch. I was looking back at my channel, I think it's been over six months since I caught any sizable surf perch out here in the surf. So that's the goal for today. Three 12 inchers. And if we catch more, great. And if not, well, we're gonna try our hardest. I brought this to start off with, the Lucky Craft. Um, but I also brought some other stuff because another thought that I had last night is I can't just come out here and expect to catch them on the same thing every time, even though this is probably my favorite way to catch them in the surf. I gotta be versatile, so I brought some other stuff. I have my pack here, I'll bust out if this doesn't work. So anyways, gotta start casting here. We're a little bit later than we wanted to come out, but you know, we're out here nonetheless, probably about 7.30 now. Um, sun just came up. The birds diving right here. I don't know if that necessarily means anything for surf perch. They're not really chasing bait like a, a striped bass, howled or something like that, but you know, some activity out here and I think a striper won't be mad about that either. So. Anyways, let's start casting. A lot of seaweed on the beach here. Not necessarily a great sign. A lot of times when it's like that, it's also in the water. A couple casts and we'll find out for sure what we're working with. Uh oh. Not looking good on the first cast. try down the beach a little bit but the initial signs are not good all this junk in the water really hard to fish with this amount of seaweed in the water yeah this isn't gonna work too much junk here yeah so once your lure comes across any type of grass like that just one little strand of grass will mess up the whole action of the lure so it doesn't swim through the water properly and when it's not swimming through the water like it's supposed to, those fish aren't gonna hit it. So unfortunately, you know, conditions look somewhat good, but that grass just really messes with the whole operation. So a little bit of a quick trip to spot number one, but at least we can rule this out. We're moving on. Spot number two, we'll give this a try. I don't feel as good about this place. It's a little bit flat. I'd like it if there was a little bit of a steeper drop off for the fish to hang out in, but it's possible they could be in there. All right, time to dig into my bag of tricks. So what we have here is a very simple Carolina rig. I want to stick a reel in sand, but basically all it is is a sliding weight right there sliding barrel sinker. I think that's a one ounce. You can go anywhere from like two to like maybe even a half or a quarter ounce if it's really, really calm and you don't want to, don't need to cast very far. Um, but anyways, it's a one ounce followed by a bead just to protect that sinker from hitting the swivel, which comes right behind the bead. And then maybe a three foot leader to your J hook. And you want to match that hook size to the size of the bait you're using. And the nice thing about a Carolina rig is you can do a lot of different stuff with this. You can put any kind of bait on here. You know, surf perch will eat. Sand crabs is always my number one choice, but you can also use uh, like blood worms, pile worms, shrimp, 
probably like mussels. I don't know. They'll, they'll eat a bunch of different stuff, um, which we might get to later today. We might get have to put a sand crab on here if uh, the times get tough. But first, I'm gonna try a few artificials, and I brought a bunch of different ones with me. I basically just raided my surf perch bag last night just to see what I had left in stock. There's a few. I'm gonna show you everything here. So I got a bunch of different kinds of grubs. That's a little curly tail, motor oil. That's like a, a classic. We also have pumpkin seed. Um, oh, those are just hooks. More motor oil. I think I'm gonna start with that one. That's like a classic surf perch color. But you can also put these guys on. These are just uh, gulp sandworms. These are really effective as well. That might be my second choice. Just some more grubs, different set, shapes, styles, a few different colors. But yeah, let's start with that one. Very, very simple setup there, but that's a, a motor oil red flake. So you can see it's got those red sparkles in there, and then motor oil is that like greenish, rootberry-ish color. I don't know why, but for some reason this is a good color for a surf perch. So, anyways, let's cast this in. See what happens. Round two. The nice thing about these grubs is they're gonna cast a lot farther than that Lucky Craft did. And we can work it a little bit slower. So if the hole is a little bit farther out, um, it's a little bit easier to, to work that hole. And I like to mix up the retrieve. Sometimes I'll just pause it every once in a while, especially when that wave is receding. Just kind of let the, that grub swim in one place but sometimes they also like to hit it when it's moving a little bit quicker so just kind of mix it up till you figure out what's working all right time for a move we fish this for 15 20 minutes or so i might have had one little tap but other than that pretty dry so we're keep moving spot number three all right beach number three still rocking the motor oil red flake perch scrub and it's been a while since I've been here. I actually thought my biggest striper ever at this beach right here. That was a long time ago before YouTube days, probably like 10, 12 years ago now. And I'm not anticipating a catch striper here. Perch for perch and it looks really good right here. Got a nice little trough going through here. Definitely some bait. You can see these birds trying to get some sand crabs in the, in the sand here. So we're gonna work this way down to the left. Just cast, cast and move, cast and move, cast and move until we find something, so. Anyways, that's the plan. There we go. There's a fish. Finally. Not a huge one by any means. Oh my God, it's not even a perch. Okay, well, I guess we can't get greedy at this point. That's not what we're looking for. Oh, there's one. Ay, ay, ay. Well, I guess it's more than we caught yesterday, but that's not the species that we're looking for. Of all the species, this is probably the one that we least want to catch. Same setup, but now we got this Berkeley Gulp sandworm on here. And this is a classic. If you're just looking for like the easiest way to come out to the surf and try and catch some fish, it's probably the easiest. You don't have to worry about bait, you know, digging up sand crabs or anything. And then also this is very effective. You can even fish this just sitting in there. You don't need to move it at all. And those fish will hit it. Oh no. Ay, ay, ay. Once again, not the target species. Ay, ay, ay. 
Boo. It's been tough so far. Haven't found them. I think I need to regroup. We'll see what time it is. 11.30. I think I need to regroup. Get some food in me. And then get to the next one. We ate lunch. Definitely wasn't healthy, but we ate it. I went to one beach right after that. Maybe one cast. Look at that. A ton of weeds here. Got out of there. Now we're on to beach number four, five, six. I don't even know. It's all just coming a blur at this point, but we're keeping at it. Just put one foot in front of the other. Keep casting. Make every cast count. And Never know when you might find a big school. Oh, I got one. I got one. Definitely not a big one, but it is the target species. That's what two days of grinding in the surf looks like on this round. I know it's not much, but me I'll take it definitely not a 12 incher got some room to grow before that happens all right back you go bigger a little bit bigger still not huge but in the right direction a little bit better probably seven or eight inches first one was like six okay well there are some fish here, but I don't think they're the quality that I'm looking for, so hate to say it, but we gotta move on. Sprinting down the stairs here. The parking lot I parked in is closing at sunset. So I probably have about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But we'll get a few casts in. Just enough to see if there's any fish here. Alright, here we go. fish not a big one though just a little guy little sunset fish oh, oh man really small look at that little guy the sunset fish bigger not much though there we go another one there's one well there's a lot of fish in there but unfortunately they're kind of small and you guys right here are trying to body surf these waves so not an ideal situation here but i'm gonna keep casting here's one A little bit bigger. Oh, 
There we go. That might have been the biggest one of the day. All right, that was fun. Let's get back to the car.